My next guest is someone whose life changed overnight in 2012 and then again in 2016, though for very different reasons. Alongside Lawrence Whiteley in the double skulls, she is a reigning Paralympic and world rowing champion and favourite for glory again in Tokyo. It's Lauren Rowles. So Lauren, how is uh, lockdown treating you? Are you spending hours on the rowing machine? Yeah, pretty much my life consists of getting up in the morning um, at an appropriate time now, not, not too early, because us rowers tend to get up too early, so now I'm just, you know, clocking in the lines. And yeah, just getting on the rowing machine in the morning, just spending like an hour a day pretty much on the rowing machines. And then we're training pretty hard um, in kind of weights at the moment. We're trying to lift as much as possible. And what's been really nice, a highlight of my lockdown has been getting to go out on my bike a bit more and just getting out because it's not something we usually get to do. Obviously we're rowing all the time. And so yeah, it's been really awesome just to get out there and see other cyclists and see everybody else out in the countryside getting out. I was speaking to Ali Jawad the other day, the powerlifter, and you've got a setup behind you there that I think he'd be proud of, that home gym going <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, Ali would be impressed, hopefully, with my, uh, my <laughs> bar setup. I was really lucky when we first went into lockdown, I was stressing, I was going, I'm going to need weights, I'm going to need to plan everything that we needed. And because there's so many athletes that train um, at AIS Centre, at Bisham, they were trying to figure out how much they could give to people. And so I was like, I need dumbbells, I need plates, I need dumbbells, I need a bar. And so I just contacted everybody that I knew that basically owned a gym. And I was like, please, can you give me anything? <laughs> and I was really lucky that I have a great group of people um, in my kind of like support network. And they gave me, I had people I knew back from home, um, CrossFit box in, in, in Bromsgrove and they gave me some stuff and then um, we had some, I had some other people that had bits and bobs that lent me stuff and they were like sure if it's helping a, a Paralympic athlete train and get to the games then of course we're going to give it to you. <laughs> it's great that you can keep fit and, and, and out on the bike and things but how much are you missing being out on the water? Oh so much I mean Rome for us is it's like any athlete in whatever sport they do the specific thing that they do it's your release it's like I think what sport is to us, it's not only competing at the highest level, but it's also a therapy for us in a way. And I think that being out on the water, especially for Paralympic athletes, you know, it's sometimes it's being free of the disability. And that's a big thing for Rome for me. It's getting in the boat, pushing off from the side, kind of being free from my disability for a while. And I think that that's something that I really miss and not having that element of getting out on the water in the morning, hearing the birds, hearing the water. I really miss that serenity almost. We won't dwell on it too long, but just for people who don't know uh, too much about you, take us back to 2012 and, and the night in February of that year. Yeah, so um, 1st of February 2012, I was a 13-year-old girl, went to school that day, everything was normal, was able-bodied. Uh, probably got home from school, did a bit of dancing in my living room, uh, went to bed that night and the next morning I woke up and couldn't feel or move my legs. And overnight I'd become paralysed and later on found out that day that I had a rare neurological disease called transverse myelitis, which I now figure a lot of other people have got and uh, of athletes I've met, you know, we all have our own stories of how we came about having transverse myelitis and it is a really unusual and rare kind of um, neurological disease to have and it can affect people in, in many different ways and so when I originally went into hospital we didn't know whether I was going to be left with long-term paralysis or whether I'd recover fully because the extent and the, the scale at which um, kind of patients with um, transverse myelitis can recover is very different. People can make drastic recoveries and people you know can be severely long-term paralyzed from this and so um, it was a very unknown time and the first point was about treating me it was about stopping the paralysis getting any higher because I was losing sensation and movement uh, as the days went on and so it was about like stopping that immediately and I actually got transferred to Bristol Bristol Children's Hospital where I was on um, the dialysis ward there because I was receiving blood transfusions um, to get basically rid of all the, essentially what transverse myelitis is, is where your antibodies attack your spinal cord and they get all confused and they're meant to go and like attack a cold or something that you might have in your body that's foreign and instead they get confused and then they go and attack your spinal cord and that's how you get left with the damage. And so essentially what they did at Bristol was that I had uh, something called plasma phoresis and it's where you remove the plasma out of your blood and they just recycle it. 
And so I had a, a, a huge extensive range of treatment of that. I had white blood cell treatment. And then um, when I was kind of strong enough and stable enough and my condition had stabilized, they sent me to Stoke Mandeville, which was um, the rehab unit there, which most people, if you, I know most Paralympians went there. Uh, if you have a spinal cord injury, you've most likely been there um, or Oswald Street or something in your time. And yeah, just really started to kind of, rehab and, and figure out this new life that was going to be for me um but for me that was a really dark time because I was a sporty grown up I was that kid growing up that took PE class like it was the Olympic Games and at seven years old I said to myself that I wanted to you know I used to grow up watching Kelly Holmes, Paula Radcliffe and I wanted to be an Olympian so bad like I, I was different to other kids at school I knew that I had this passion for sport that was just like no other and I just remember always growing up feeling like I was the crazy kid that loved sports so much. And actually, you know, when I was seven, I realized that I actually wanted to become an Olympian. And so my life dream was just becoming an Olympian. And so for a girl that couldn't walk or run, like going to the Olympics, that was my dream crushed at 13 years old. And it just completely tore down my world. I, I, was, I was in a really bad way for a really long period of time. And then London 2012, the summer of London 2012 comes along and we all know about that fantastic summer. Um, I can see Mandeville, the like, mascots behind you there. Um, and I, I just, I remember my mum saying to me, I was actually still in hospital at this period. So I'd not ever been, I'd not been into London for, for a long time. And I'd not really been out of the hospital much at all. And I wasn't really comfortable with like being in a chair and my disability and stuff. And my mum said to me, do you want to go watch the London 2012 Paralympics and I remember thinking I don't know what I'm in for here but okay we'll go and for me growing up I grew up on the outskirts of Birmingham didn't know anybody that was disabled growing up didn't know what Paralympic sport was I knew of Adi Deputan I didn't even know his name at the time I knew Adi Deputan because he'd been on the adverts and he he did that one advert for BBC I don't know if you remember and it was he used to do the yeah. dancing in the in his chair <laughs> and so I didn't even really know him for sport but I knew he played basketball and that was pretty much the only disabled person I grew up knowing on TV or even in my life and so pushing into the park uh, the Olympic Park that day I just remember pushing in and just seeing so many people that had disabilities and go, my mind just literally blew in that moment. And I remember just feeling like, wow, I'm at home. Like, this is where I belong and this is my people. And I felt really comfortable with my disability. And actually my mom was the minority in that part of the day because <laughs> she was the one that was walking. And we went to watch swimming, rugby, um, blind football. I, I just remember my mind being blown. And I, I pushed out the park that day and I was transformed. Like I went in as a girl who was depressed, given up on an Olympic dream, was totally just not accepting her disability and coming out of the park that day going, I want to be a Paralympian. I want to be one of these athletes. And that there was more to life than, than what my disability had, had given me. And I, I just... I, it was like a, a trigger just flipped in my mind. It just switched and I was like, this is it. This is what my passion is. And like, it literally just transformed what my dream was as a seven-year-old into something far greater that gave me far more purpose. And so that was 2012. And then I, later on that November, I got involved um, in Coventry. There was a wheelchair racing group there. Um, and like most kids, I, I kind of grew up, um, you know, doing athletics. And so I thought the best place for me to return would be to the track. Yeah, and so I kind of decided that I was going to do wheelchair racing, and we found this club in Coventry, uh, the Godiva Harriers, and we got involved uh, with Joe King and the group down there, and yeah, just took off from there pretty much, starting my Paralympic journey really. And what was the switch from athletics to rowing? How did how did rowing and you meet? Well, <laughs> this is where it starts to get, I suppose, a little bit uh, exciting for me. Is so I'd been doing athletics. I, I went to Commonwealth Games um, in 2014 and was kind of the youngest uh, athletics squad member there. And that was, I mean, getting the call up to do Commonwealth Games and for, to do wheelchair racing was, was a dream. Like I did not a lot special. I came ninth overall, but for me, that was enough. Um, and unfortunately, at Commonwealth Games, I picked up a bit of a wrist injury. Um, and that was a really tricky time for me. It was the first time I'd been injured um, my whole kind of, I suppose, career as an athlete, um, but I was really uh, tough for me having I mean, to take then a step away from the sport. And But it was actually in that period that I found a little bit of what I was missing, I suppose. And that for me was passion. And, 
it was about doing something that day in day out I just love doing and I um, had a great opportunity I suppose come my way and um, in 2015 um, I was actually back at Stoke Mandeville and I was uh, back at the rehab unit and I said to my um, my sports therapist there, I remember saying to her, you know, I'm kind of, you know, doing athletics still, but I'm kind of, you know, taking a little bit of a step back. I've got a bit of an injury. And she said, oh, well, the GB Roan Talent Scouts with the power program are going to be coming in next week. She said, so she said, you should come down to the session. And I remember thinking to myself, I don't even know what rowing is. Like, I'm from Birmingham, so rowing just isn't a thing. <laughs> in my head, rowing was canoeing, which I now know they're different. But um, at the time, I had no concept of what it was. And I just remember thinking, no, no way can I go and tell my mom that I'm now getting myself involved in something else. Um, but funnily enough, the week comes around and uh, my sports therapist said to me, come on, come on down to the session. And I didn't go. I stayed up on the ward that night and she came and she found me. And uh, she said, please come down. They're, they're looking for someone just like you, young, like female with a disability. Come on, please come down. This could be a great opportunity. And am I glad that she's totally forced me to come down that day in the end because it was the start of a great journey for me. I went down, got on a rowing machine, pulled the hardest I ever could. I didn't know what I was doing at the time. I was literally 16 year old, scrawny, like didn't have any muscle or anything to me. And uh, they said to me, you know, we think you're actually really good. And I remember thinking, what? You look at the same thing as I'm looking at because I definitely don't think I'm cut out for this. And they said to me, we'd love to get you in a boat. And I said, okay then, well, I'll have to speak to my mum about it. And they said, you know, I said, well, what, when would it be and where and stuff? And they said, well, you'd have to come down to Reading. And that was, you know, like 100 miles away from where I lived in Birmingham. And I, so I remember calling my mum up. Hi, mum. I've been on, uh, to a session with British Growing Talent Scouts. And they really like me. And they've asked me to come down and be in a boat. And I just remember her response being like, Lauren, I can't believe you've got involved in something else. <laughs> but she supported it no matter what. because She saw how excited I was about that. So a week later, I was... Uh, in a boat in the middle of the Thames, 100 miles away from home, and started my rowing career, I suppose. Um, took my first strokes, and I just remember that day like so vividly. I remember getting in the boat for the first time. I I turned up. A funny story is, is you know anything about rowing, you should never row with pockets because your blades get caught in the pockets. And I turned up in a track, a Nike track suit with four pockets in, thinking that I look really good. And um, my coach, kind of going on to coach me, said, "You need to take that off. You can't." And so there I was, I had to turn my jacket inside out because it was a cold winter's day in February. We had no other option, so I'm in this inside out jacket, get in the boat, and I strap in, and I remember just pushing off for the first time. And I remember just feeling this sense of freedom that I hadn't had since I used to run as a kid. I hadn't had it in athletics, and it was the first time since being in a chair that I felt this level of freedom. And I just remember feeling like I'm free of the disability. And for me, that was a big thing. You know, I was still adjusting, even though I was, you know, comfortable with the disability in some senses, a lot of kind of my, another half of my brain was always not accepting it. And especially when you're a teenager and going through, you know, just regular female stages of your life, um, as well as coping with a, a now disability, was really like hard for me and I struggled with that. And so finding rowing was really, for me, a form of therapy, like I said earlier. And yeah, I remember not looking back after that day. I think I, about a couple of weeks later, they said to me, we've got a boat that you could be part of with another guy called Lawrence. Uh, Lauren and Lawrence, I know that works well. Um, <laughs> but he, um, and we want to qualify the boat for the 2016 Paralympic Games in, in five months time, because you have to qualify at the World Championships. And they said, you're going to have to drop everything. You're going to have to basically come and kind of be down here as much as possible. And you're going to have to train as much as possible with Lawrence. And we're going to try and qualify this boat. So I remember about a week later, I, I kind of I debated what, what to do. And I was like, oh, I've got so much invested in wheelchair racing. What do I do? Like, what is it that I do? And it was just literally taking a leap of faith based upon a session that I'd had in a boat that gave me a feeling. So I, I basically made a leap of faith for a feeling, which sounds stupid, but for me, it was everything. 
and I um, kind of spoke to my coach at athletics. I said, I'm leaving, I'm off, bye. Um, see you maybe sometime in the future, but I'm off for now and I'm gonna go and explore this opportunity. Uh, and five months after taking my first stroke, I was on a world championship start line. Um, and at that world championships, we were the first Paralympic boat, well, first Olympic and Paralympic boat to qualify from GB for rowing. And so, I mean, I remember that moment of just crossing through the line um, and that feeling of, of qualifying and going, I, you know what, like, I'm, I'm, I'm that one step closer to my, my childhood dream. And that was just insane to, to, to go from not knowing what Rome was and thinking I was signing up to go to canoeing to then kind of, you know, being on a world championship stuff. And that was insane. But I love every minute of the process. It's absolutely amazing and a great testament to you to think that what four and a half years after after waking up paralysed, you were you were winning the gold medal at the Paralympics with Lawrence. Yeah. Um, are you are you um, are you and Lawrence mates? Is it sort of all too serious to be friends, or, or do you get on? No, we're really good friends. Um, it gets we have to come up with code names for each other, so we learnt quite early on because we communicate through radios in rowing. So we learnt quite early on that our names were way too similar to communicate through a radio, <laughs> Lauren and Lawrence, and what we should individually be doing. So he's called Renzo, and I'm Lauren still. Um, uh, some some of them call me Swalls because my last name is Rouse. I mean, it's a long-winded story, but um, and then it's all about being swole in the gym and being right. big and and. Uh, big muscles so um yeah i'm known i'm known for my lifting ability in rowing but yeah i i um yeah it instantly kind of like lawrence is the complete opposite to me personality wise i'm chat 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 extrovert like i'm a rule follower completely just give me the stuff i'll do it as hard as i possibly can whereas lawrence is very he's like really introverted he, he really thinks about what it is how to make the boat go quickly he has a great sense of feeling a very very gifted rower um and before i turned up he'd been there three years previous to that without any partner and he couldn't um in in rowing we only have four boat classes so he couldn't row without being in a double with a with another female and so he'd gone a long time without ever being able to compete at world championships he could only do like domestic regattas or just small international regattas so he'd never had the experience of a rowing a double but b never going to a major competition and so that together was a learning process now we're both at that level where we're like we know individually what makes us strong and it's about how do we bring that into the boat together to, to make this pairing even better than it was in 2016. And I, I think we're just really enjoying learning from each other still. And even, you know, this is going to be uh, my seventh year coming onto the team now. Um, you know, I'm still learning so much and I just enjoy the element I love about rowing is every day you, you can get something from it. Every day you're developing and becoming a, either a better person or growing as a person um, or, you know, you're seeing physical, physical outcomes to that. And that's what I love about rowing is just the reward you get from it as well. You know, it's, phys it's physically and mentally challenging in so many ways, like the training is grueling but I just love that reward from it. And that's, I suppose I'm a bit of a, a nutter for, for liking put myself through that much pain, but at the end of it is, you know, however long you have to wait, there is a reward at the end of it. And I really love what Rowan gives me. And you're passing on that reward now, aren't you? Because uh, Alice Ty, the swimmer was telling me that you're giving her <laughs> rowing machine tips. I think Alice has got one eye on becoming a rower herself in the future, but uh, you're becoming the coach now. Yeah, I've been putting my coaching hat on a little bit for this quarantine period. I, um, I'd i sat kind of a few people I knew, a few of the athletes I knew had had uh, row machines. And Alice actually reached out to me and said, look, I've got this old, old row machine my, my parents bought like 20 years ago or whatever. She was like, what, can you give me some advice and sessions to do? And I said, sure, like, you know, come, we're doing some sessions and stuff with our team. I can send you what we're doing and come along and I'll, I'll teach you basically how to row on it. And she's, she's a weapon, she's, she's quick. Um, but that's awesome for me, just to have her in the fold. We've had a few of the other athletes. We've even just been getting guys coming in and doing the sessions. We had um, Helen Scott from Cycling, who's the pilot on the tandem uh, with Sophie Thornhill. And she's been coming and doing, she's been on the turbo on her bike and she's been doing the sessions with us. So we've had people from, from all sports. I've been doing some training uh, with uh, Carrie Denigan, you know um and helen and whatnot and we've been doing some sessions in the gym uh hannah dines from cycling charlotte henshaw from canoeing 
you know, we've been Claire Cashmore from Triathlon, you know, we've been doing um, our own little group sessions, um, lifting together. And it's just really been nice. I think the one thing that I've really enjoyed in this quarantine period is us athletes coming together from all different sports. Literally, I think the other day we had three, champ three or four champions from different sports on the same call doing the same thing. And that just blew my mind because I was just like, wow, what a way the communities come together to support each other through this period. But yeah, Alice is awesome. Like having her there for me as well, she, she would roughly be kind of the same classification as me, I think. So, oh dear, no, no, hold on, hold on, don't, don't no, make it's it too good. Healthy, healthy competition. <laughs> I'm always a challenge, so it's been nice to see her grow and really enjoy it as well. You know, I think if it's one sport I really kind of sympathise with, it is with the, the swimming lot, and they can't go out and be in the pool and they can't exactly do it from home either. So, I mm. think it's, you know, for them you know, their well-being, their mental well-being and their enjoyment as well has been lost. Whereas I can still get on the, on the indoor rower. You know, I can still put myself through that pain at home, mm. whereas swimmers can't. So it's it's a difficult one for them. And it's nice that as a, as a team, as Paralympic GB, we're supporting each other, you know. And, and actually, internationally, I've had a lot of the, the other rowers that we compete against reach out, um, been sending them some stuff of, of what we're up to. And anyone that wants to join, we're just taking on board at the moment just so we can stay together as a community. Yeah, it's fantastic to have that camaraderie and team spirit. Well, I'll I'll, um, I'll let you get back to the uh, bench press behind you, uh, yeah, and, um, and keep on uh, keep on keeping fit and well, and we'll see yeah, you back in action much. as soon as possible, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully we'll be back at it hopefully soon. But I know that next year is going to be an incredible year, and we're going to put on a really great show for everyone. Perfect. Thanks, Laura. No worries. Thanks. <laughs>